Waves plugins are really cool, and it's kind of a flex to be like, oh yeah, I've got Waves plugins on my live console, but there are other plugins out there, and some of them work better than Waves, and some of them don't work better than Waves. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you the plugins that I like better than Waves, and the Waves plugins that still win. If we haven't met yet, my name is James and I help worship leaders and church sound techs eliminate the mystery and frustration with sound at church. So if you're just getting started with plugins or you've already got a whole arsenal of plugins that you like, this video is for you. Go ahead and mash subscribe and hit that thumbs up. The first plugin that goes in my vocal chain is Waves Tune Real Time. Yes, there's Antares Auto Tune Artist, but Waves has it for one price for 30 or $40, depending on the week, and it works great. You only have to pay once and you don't have to do a subscription. Thank you, Waves, for making that change back to not requiring a subscription for everything. There are plenty of other videos out about that plugin, so we'll skip it and move on to the rest. But just so you know, the Waves one, it definitely wins in this one. Now, when it comes to an EQ that's both parametric and dynamic, the Waves F6 is a great plugin. But the next best contender that I could find is the FabFilter Pro Q3. Like the Waves version, it's got static and dynamic EQ bands, but with the Pro Q3, you've got a lot more bands that you can use, and you're not just limited to the six like on the Waves version. Let me show you what I set up for this live vocal. And if you're wondering, I'm running my channels through my PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 console. I've got a band in a box hard disk recorder right over here, and that goes out analog into the analog inputs. So it's like I've got a live band without having to have a live band. Now the way that you get channels to and from the computer on the Studio Live Series 3 console requires that you're totally totally pre or totally post all the processing on the channel. I want to get to the computer before all the processing, but what I would really prefer is to have a pickoff point for an insert that comes after the EQ but before the compressor. We don't have that on this console, so this is how I'm going to do it. I would usually do all my EQ on the console because I need to get to it fast, but if I've got to use a plugin and this plugin really helps, this is the one that I'm going to reach for. So here you can see I've got my low shelf that I like and I can even make it dynamic. So here on the outer band, let's see, that's my high pass filter. There's my dynamic EQ. We've got our level control here, but we also have our dynamic ring so we can change the dynamic range. It's gonna be met based on the threshold that is either automatic or we can press this and adjust it up and down so that we get control of the threshold. Most of the time, auto works great. I like this for the variations in proximity effect as singers are coming back from the vocal mic or into the vocal mic a little bit more. I like to have some play in the way that that low shelf interacts with the vocal. You know, we've got our other bands here, and then up here, I have this totally flat until it reaches the threshold, and then we can push down this harsher frequency up here. Now, if you've seen my other video on how I set up Waves plugins for my channel strip, you might have remembered the whistle tone preset that I used for F6. It's very narrow bands that react dynamically when somebody sings really hard. It has this harshness at certain specific frequencies, and we wanna just tame those a little bit. Now, I did set this up on the Pro Q3, and one of the benefits of this one is that there are many more bands with the Pro Q3 than there are on the F6, right? The F6 only has six bands. That's why it's called F6. This one has over 10, at least. So I was able to get a lot more processing on all of those bands in one plugin, rather than having to have two different ones and try to adjust them each individually. It saves me a step to use this one over the Waves F6. Another non-Waves plugin that I really like models one of my favorite analog compressors ever, and probably one of the most versatile ones too. It's the model of the Distressor. This one's from Kive, and they call it the X-Stressor. If they're trying to veil what they're emulating, they're not doing a great job, but this sounds a whole lot like the real thing. It comes on sale from time to time, and this one's about 50 bucks, which I think is a good deal for a plugin that's this versatile. Let me show you what it is and why I like it. So here we've got our ratio buttons, so we can do that, and if you have room mics in the studio, choose the nuke option, you will thank me for it. But we have our input and output, a lot like an 1176 behaves, and our attack and release times are super versatile with this plugin. Right now, for this one, I've got it in opto mode, so it's gonna act and behave like an LA-2A. And I really like having that plugin as my first compressor in the chain to just kind of tame the overall dynamic range and kind of push up the quieter parts a little bit 
without being apparent or like, oh, there's a compressor there. In what's called optical mode, you put the attack time on 10 and the release time on zero, and then you basically just use your input and output to get enough gain reduction to push down on the vocal. You'll get a little bit of harmonic distortion in a pleasing way, a lot like you would on a tube unit. So that's actually really fun. The other thing that I like to do with this one, so on this vocal chain I've got two in a row, is because the other thing it does really well is it behaves a whole lot like an 1176. It can get those very fast attack times that feel really good and get that in your face kind of vocal without giving that crunchy kind of feeling unless you really push it hard, but most of the time you can stay in that safe zone but still get that in your face vocal. So we can take our attack time and bring it up to about three, and that's gonna help a whole lot. Uh, we can also keep our release time pretty fast as well. That's super fun. You can put it in British mode, which actually makes it distort more, but I don't usually wanna do that on vocals, usually. I might if I'm having fun, but most of the time I don't need extra distortion on the vocals to make that happen. Now, one other very fun plugin, which is not necessary, but it kind of adds a little bit to it, is this Novel Tech Vocal Enhancer. You can choose the range at which it kind of expands some of those presence frequencies and gives that vocal just a little touch more closeness. Now, the Waves counterpart of this would be the Vitamin plugin, or there might be some other sonic maximizers out there, but this one works great. And again, it's outside of the Waves universe, and if you're using Live Professor, you can use it. If you're just using Waves Super Rack Performer, you can't use these other plugins. So using Live Professor gives you a few more options and you can still use Waves if you want. You just have some more flexibility. So now let's listen to this vocal and apply each of these one at a time so that you can hear what they're doing, kind of see what I like about it and hopefully you can hear it well. Okay, that's your normal, you know, vocal mic coming in. Let me turn this in. I can turn each one of these off. And this dynamic band up here really just helps a whole lot. So you can turn that off. It just takes off a little bit of the bite. Now after all my compression, right, after my vocals are in your face, that's when I'm gonna put the other Pro Q3. We've got all the other compressors bypassed now, so any threshold adjustments that I might have made to this aren't working precisely because we don't have to make up gain from these other compressors and because it was off. Oh, there we go. Now we can turn on these in auto mode, or we can take all of them off auto mode and just have it be manual. We can adjust the threshold here. And we would do that for each one. So you hear it a little bit now, you'll hear it a little bit more when uh, we engage those compressors so that it's more in your face. So let's take a look at this distressor, excuse me, X-stressor. Now we're gonna turn it on. So it's not making a big difference but we're just pushing up those quieter parts a little bit more. So that feels good there. Let's take a look at the next one, and it's gonna get a little bit different tone from our compressor. You stand alone, you stand alone in glory and majesty. So you hear it got a little brighter, a little bit more in your face, and that's because from that faster attack time. So we sing hallelujah, hallelujah. And I really like that. Now let's look at the other Pro Q3. 
And now that we've got our gain up a little bit more, these bands, we want to hit a little bit gentler. We give you glory That's in auto mode. We can change it. You're the Lord and you reign. Hallelujah. So we can go through with each one of these and kind of fine tune where it's grabbing those frequencies. Let me bypass it one more time. Yes, he reigns. We have come to give you all the glory. We give you glory, you're, and you're the Lord, our God. You reign. So I'm feeling good about that. Now that we've taken those specific frequencies down a little bit more, let's look at the vocal enhancer and listen when we turn that on. And the enhancement percentage. Just turning this up a little bit helps with that focus and really bringing it forward. You would want to be careful in a live context not to overdo this so you don't hurt people, especially if there's variations in the tone of your PA. So this is down at like 10 or 15%. So it's subtle, but it helps make it feel like, oh, there it is, it's a little bit closer. So those are some plugins that I found that I really enjoy on vocals. Now there's one more that I found for drums specifically that I think outdoes the Waves version. The Lindell 50 plugin, I think does better than the Waves API emulations. There's one feature that I think does it better. Now there's arguments over whether you like the 550 EQ or the 560 EQ or all that. The EQ is pretty comparable as far as its tone, but, Built in here is the high pass filter. And that's one thing that keeps a lot of people from using the API plugin by itself as their primary EQ. It's because there's no high pass filter built in. Now this also has the compressor channel on there, but again, the X stressor works fantastic on drums as well. So that's another reason why it's a great bargain of a plugin to buy. It's even a great bargain to buy the hardware versions of the distressor, but I digress. There's a lot packed into this plugin and it sounds great. So let me play the drums for you and then how I applied EQ with it and bypass them back and forth. So you can hear the tone that you get and this little high pass filter that's variable over here makes a big difference too. So let's listen to just the drums with and without these plugins engaged. All right, so here's the drums, dry as can be, right? There's no effects going either. So with the distressors all bypassed, right? We'll just turn on the channel and we'll hear what we did on. Sounds nice, let's turn on the snare too. Kind of flabby and lifeless. And that sounds much better. So the fixed points on the EQ make it a lot easier to dial in different frequencies. A lot of these frequencies, you can just choose what you want. And it's not like a variable knob that goes forever in all directions. You get to kind of refine, I want to pick this frequency and I want to cut it. I think that's super helpful. The compressor sounds good as well. Now let's put the extressor plugins back on and we get our real punch again. Now, the toms without it, and the toms with it is night and day different. Nice. Now, on the toms, I am using some gain reduction on the expander for the toms as well. So when you compress toms, you're pushing up the noise floor. Sometimes it's helpful to have an expander before the compression to not push up just more cymbal noise.
You can also use the compressor on the overheads to kind of compress the snare out a little bit. And I've got the attack time really fast on this, so I'm just trying to get those transients out so that I can get the cymbals up a little bit more. So there you have it. There are plugins out there that outdo Waves. Some of the Waves ones are cheaper, but some of these are better. So which one's right for you? I'll let you decide. But for me, my plugin host of choice being Live Professor 2 gives me the flexibility to choose what I want. And some of these are pretty DSP light and still very low latency so that you can use them for your live console. If you liked this video and wanna see more stuff like it, go ahead and mash that subscribe button. If this video was really helpful, smash that thumbs up. It helps me know that you enjoyed it and I'll keep making more. And remember, it's all about the low end. Avoid the sound tech solo and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.